Okay, so we're going to do um, some examples with trigonometric integrals. And before that, I want you guys to recall for this case um, the Pythagorean identities. And I'm going to use, you know, one main one. Because um, I'm only going to focus on sine and cosine. Um, so I want you guys to remember that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. And so we're going to use that concept. So <clears throat> using that, and by the way, if this is true, then I can manipulate, subtract sine squared from both sides, and cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared, and vice versa. I can isolate sine squared and subtract cosine squared from bo both sides and say that sine squared is equal to 1 minus cosine squared. Okay, so again, like I'm going to use this for some of these trigonometric integrals that I'm going to do. So the first example is I want to integrate sine to the third of x times cosine to, oh, sorry, cosine squared x dx. <clears throat> and in this example, um, the power of sine is odd and positive. Now, the goal here, obviously in this case, the way that it looks, we can't use basic u sub, uh, u substitution. I have to manipulate to um, get what I need. So because sine is odd and the Pythagorean identities, they deal with even exponents, because sine has the odd exponent, what I want to do is I want to be able to convert um, to cosine. And so we're going to convert to cosine. But because sine is odd, I'm going to keep one of those signs. So here's what I mean. So I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to bring the cosine squared to the front. And then I'm going to separate the sine to the third as a sine squared and a sine. Right, so I have my even exponent sine squared and I have this one extra sine <clears throat> because sine um, has an odd degree. I have this one extra sine that I'm hoping to use later. If everything is in terms of cosine, I can use that later for a u sub base. Okay, so um, let's convert everything else to cosine. So sine squared using um, Pythagorean identity can be replaced with one minus cosine squared and I have this extra sine of x um, I'm going to distribute so that everything is in terms of cosine here, cosine squared x minus cosine to the fourth of x times sine of x. And being that sine started with an odd exponent, here's the, um, here's the part where the basic u substitution is going to come into play. I'm going to separate this, cosine squared x times sine of x dx, right? So the sine of x will distribute, and I'm going to separate it into two different integrals, minus cosine to the fourth x times sine of x dx. And now I have these two different um, integrals, which, if you notice, now it can be solved by basic u substitution, where u, in this case, is going to be cosine of x du is negative sine of x dx, u in this case is the same thing, cosine x, and du is negative sine x dx. So I do need a negative sign here so that I can substitute. So I'm going to put a negative 1 basically here. I didn't leave enough space for that. But because I put a negative 1 here, I have to put a negative in the front. I'm going to put a negative 1 in front of this one. And because I'm putting a negative here, I need to place a negative here, which will make this sign positive. And now it will allow me to substitute. So I can, in place of cosine, put u. And I have cosine squared. So this is u squared. And in place of negative sine x dx, I could put du. So this is my first integral after I use my u sub. The second one is a cosine to the fourth of x. u is cosine of x. So I can write this as u to the fourth. And then this negative sine x dx is basically du. And now I have two basic integration um, rules. And the opposite of u to the third over 3 plus u to the fifth over 5 plus c because we have the indefinite integral. 
And last but not least, because I substituted, I have to back substitute. And now in place of u, I'm going to put cosine. So I have the opposite of cosine of x to the third over 3 plus cosine of x to the fifth over 5 plus c. Um, so this is, of course, my final result. You can also um, write it as negative one third times cosine to the third x, right? We could write it this way, plus one fifth times cosine to the fifth x plus c. Both of these are correct, either one works. But again, <clears throat> this is the method that I'm gonna use if I start with a power of sine that is odd and positive, why odd? And of course, there's a cosine um, function here as well. Why do I need it to be odd? Because I need that extra one sign so that I can use it here for the u substitution, okay? So I'm looking for um, sign to have an odd exponent so that I can use Pythagorean identities and then u sub at the end. One extra sign is needed for this part here. Okay, let's do one more example. Um, this is the integral. Cosine to the fifth of t over the square root of sine t dt. And here I have the power of cosine is odd and positive. And it's the same exact concept um, as what we just did, being that the Pythagorean identities, they use even exponents. Cosine it has an odd exponent. That means I can have one extra leftover cosine. So that if everything else converts to sine, I have this one extra cosine, I can use basic substitution. So we're going to change everything to sine. We're going to keep one cosine because we have an odd exponent for cosine. And we're going to keep it for the substitution later. Okay, that's our goal here. So I'm going to have to rewrite this. So I'm going to rewrite this as, I'm put this sine of t here in the front and I brought it up so it's gonna to be to the negative one half. I'm gonna separate this as a cosine to the fourth of t and then I have this extra cosine of t dt, right? Because I started with the cosine to the fifth and this part is gonna be used later for the u sub. Now I need to convert this portion um, to um, sine. So we said, that in the Pythagorean identities, we have cosine squared. So basically, cosine to the fourth is cosine squared squared. And cosine squared of t, in this case, using the Pythagorean identity, can be rewritten as one minus sine squared of t. And that's still squared, right? And then this cosine of t is gonna be used later for u sub. Um, so now I'm gonna square this portion so I have a sine of t to the negative one half. And here, this is basically a um, perfect square trinomial. So I'm gonna square that first, double the product of the two middle, two sine squared t, and then square that last one plus sine to the fourth t times cosine t dt. Now I'm not done simplifying for my u sub yet. I'm gonna now distribute all of this through. Um, I'll distribute it first. Sine of t to the negative one half times one is sine of t to the negative one half. Um, distributing this minus. Now, um, if I am multiplying these two, I have to add the exponents. So if I add negative one half plus two, which is negative one half plus four halves, I'll get a three halves, okay? Um, plus, same thing with this one, let me put a little bracket here. Same thing with this one, if I'm gonna multiply this by this, they have the same base, so I'm gonna add the exponent, so negative one half plus four, negative one half plus eight halves, which is seven halves, sine to the seven halves t, all of this times cosine t d t. Now, um, I'm going to separate this. Everything is simplified in terms of sine here, and I have this extra cosine for my u sub, but I'm going to separate this into three different integrals. 
So I'm going to go to the next page here. So my first integral is going to be sine of t to the negative one half times cosine t. So I have a sine of t to the negative one half times cosine t dt. My next integral is going to be this here. I have this minus two. I'm going to keep that on the outside of my integral, minus two times the integral. And then I'm going to have the sine to the three halves t times cosine t dt sine t to the three halves times cosine t dt and my last integral is sine to the seven halves t times cosine t dt plus in front sine of t to the seven halves times cosine t dt and now everything is set up for my basic u sub um, in all of them in all of them, the u is going to be the same, sine of t, and then the du is equal to cosine of t dt. And I don't need anything in front of cosine t. I already have everything set up, right? This is my du, 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 and my u is basically each of these sine of t, so I can rewrite each of these integrals with my substitution. This is going to be u to the negative one half, and all of this is du minus two times the integral, this is my u, to the three halves times all of this, which is du, plus the integral of u to the seven halves, and all of this is du, which now becomes my basic, my very basic, basic um, integration. So I just add one to these exponents. So negative one half plus one is positive one half divided by one half is the same thing as multiplying by two minus two times u to the three halves plus one, three halves plus two halves is five halves, times the reciprocal in front, plus u to the seven halves plus one, seven halves plus two halves is nine halves, two ninths in front, plus c for my um, constant of integration. And now I can backtrack and go ahead and rewrite everything with my sine in place of a uh, sine of t in place of u. So two times sine of t to the one half minus two times two four fifths times sine of t to the five halves plus two ninths times sine of t to the nine halves all plus c. And here is my final antiderivative. So the main thing with um, these examples is if I start with a situation where my sine is an odd exponent, the degree of sine is odd, cosine is even, the degree of sine is odd and positive, the goal here would be to use Pythagorean identities to rewrite everything in cosine and have that extra sign so that you can use sub. Same exact idea here, it's just power of cosine is odd now, so we have that extra cosine for substitution later. So we're going to convert everything else into sine and keep that one extra sub, um, cosine for substitution here.